Happy Saturday snack down everyone. It's a beautiful day here in Southern California. This is fall for us. I'm so excited to share with you one of my favorite recipes from the Forks Over Knives recipe book. And this is called Tuscan White Bean and Butternut Squash Fall Soup. This is the epitome of warm, comforting soul food for the fall. So I've got tons of these delicious ingredients. We're gonna get started. And you want to buy, um, the recipe calls for a small, I couldn't find any small organic butternut squashes. So I pre-cut, but I wanna show you for those of you who aren't too familiar with butternut squashes, you just wanna cut off the ends of both. And the, the challenging part about butternut squash is you can't really tell how ripe they are. Um, I, pre I bought two and I was lucky that that one was nice and ripe. This one is a little tougher. You wanna cut it like that. You wanna scoop out the seeds, just like a pumpkin. Do my fast version. Once you get all the seeds out, you're gonna take the edges and you're just gonna cut off that skin all the way around. Just like that until you get to that lovely butternut squash on the inside. So in essence of saving time, I'm gonna set that aside. And I already pre-cut my butternut squash, but sometimes these recipes call for these vegetables that people don't use a lot, and they can be kind of intimidating when you're looking at them raw. So we're gonna start off with a heavy stock pot. This is gonna make a lot of soup. And we are gonna start off with our olive oil over here, which is just organic olive oil. It's one tablespoon. And we are gonna add, if you can get over here and look in the pot, but this is gonna start some delicious ingredients. We're gonna get our olive oil warmed up and we are gonna add our, which came out to be about a medium butternut squash. I'm gonna get it simmering in here. All right, we're gonna add our butternut squash. Our olive oil is starting to simmer takes a little time. There we go, it's starting to bubble, so I'm just gonna add my butternut squash. I wanna have that heat high. And you're gonna wanna simmer this butternut squash for about four to five minutes. This is such a tasty soup. My family and I have had it twice this year already. And I would suggest serving it with your favorite cornbread or biscuit or even bread. My favorite being that Dave's Killer Seed Bread is my absolute favorite. Um, it's a really healthy recipe because it includes kale. And as you know or maybe don't know, kale is one of the absolute most important whole food plant-based foods that you can eat on a daily basis to keep healthy. So um, again, we're just simmering that butternut squash in here. Good smells. Next, we are going to add, it's not quite five minutes, but I'm gonna kind of fast forward this recipe. Calls for one, this is a rather large yellow onion that I pre-cut, and we are gonna add the onion into our big stock pot. And we are going to combine all together and cook in this big pot. And I promise you, this is one of my tastiest favorite fall soups. And in honor of my mother-in-law's 94th birthday tomorrow that we're celebrating at our home, I'm making two pots of this. This is gonna be one of the main dishes tomorrow with some homemade cornbread, vegan, all vegan food, all delicious. Again, you can tell, I'm just gonna add a little bit more olive oil, depending on your diet restrictions. You can add less, you can add more. You can get a look at those pretty fall colors. Now this really calls for a little bit more time in simmering, but to get through the recipe, 
I'm going to speed it along a little bit. Look at that. Look at those beautiful fall colors. I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit. And next, we are going to add, it's probably only about two minutes. You'll want to get this going for about five minutes simmering in here. All right, next we are going to add our garlic. This calls for fresh garlic, one clove, smashed, a half a tablespoon, um, and then crush it. I put a little bit extra because I love, love, love garlic. So we're going to add our fresh garlic. And we're going to blend that in. Yummy. Okay, next we are going to add one of my favorite veganized products in the entire world, Miyoko's Butter. Why is this my favorite product? Because it is, it tastes like butter. It has no palm oil in it. And in honor of this Tuscany recipe, I came across my old, when I we used to consume dairy, butter dish and my beautiful niece Jackie brought this home for me from Tuscany. I thought it was fitting. Little thing I wanted to share with you. Isn't that beautiful? Obviously you need to keep the Miyoko's butter in the refrigerator or it will melt but it's wonderful for cooking and we're going to add our one tablespoon of vegan butter in with the butternut squash and onions and they're really coming along nicely. I cannot tell you how much I love Miyoko's butter. Are there any other Miyoko lovers out there? My, my kids don't even, no, no one that comes to our house knows the difference. I put it out for Thanksgiving, I put it out for Christmas, and no one knows that they're eating vegan butter. No cruelty, because as we know the dairy industry is just so imaginably cruel. So we keep cruelty out of our kitchen, we keep cruelty out of our house and our meals. Okay, so we added that fresh garlic, simmered in the olive oil, we've got our butternut squash and our onions are cooking nicely. You can see they're starting to soften. Oh my gosh, it smells so, so good. Okay. Stacy uh, Grice is low. Hi Stacy. I uh, hope you I hope you make the soup and I hope you enjoy it. Lindsay Baker just joined. Hi Lindsay Baker. Okay, we're going to move on to all of our herbs. We're going to be using rosemary, oregano, and thyme. And uh, the recipe calls for one fourth teaspoon of dried rosemary. We're going to sprinkle that. It calls for one eighth teaspoon of dried oregano. We're going to sprinkle that in. And it calls for one fourth teaspoon of dried thyme, T-H-Y-M-E. And all those herbs are spread around. And I'm gonna stir it up in here. Oh, can we get in there and look at that? Beautiful, healthy, gorgeous fall colors, wonderfully healthy. Forks over knives recipe. Okay, next we are going to add one lemon. We're gonna juice it. So I always use my lovely juicer here. And we're just gonna put that straight into the crock pot. And all of these, the combination of ingredients really combine to make such a tasty, tasty soup. Our other lemon. I love this little gadget because it keeps all the seeds out. Oh, and it's all, it's softening in here. The onions are slightly caramelized at this point. And the butternut squash is getting nice and soft. Okay, that's our lemon. And next we're going to add four cups of vegetable broth. I went with low sodium just because I think it's a little bit healthier, although I am going to add salt and pepper at the end to taste. Low sodium vegetable broth, organic. I always try to buy organic products. 
So we are going to add two cups and another two cups to our delicious Tuscany white bean and butternut squash soup. Do we have any questions before we move on? Don't see any questions. No questions. Let's get a look into what this looks like at this point. Okay, so we've got the butternut squash, all of the herbs, the fresh garlic, the Miyoko's butter, a little bit of olive oil, and next we are going to cover, and I didn't bring out my top, and we're going to bring to a boil for five minutes, and that's going to go right in there, so we can't use that. <laughs> Let's see. Where is my... Okay, we'll forget about the top, but we are going to bring to a boil. My top mysteriously disappeared. I'm turning that heat up so it's going to come to a nice boil. And the last ingredient that you're going to add is going to be um, your kale. And I wanted to show you the raw kale. And just a couple things that I've learned about kale from... One of my dear friends, Tracy Childs from PCRM. She's an amazing cook. Just, she told me when you have fresh kale and you're gonna boil it, that you don't wanna do it for more than five minutes. It cooks extremely, extremely fast. And everyone cooks and cuts differently. You can see this little stem that goes vertically. Some people take a knife and they cut it out like that. I prefer to just go to town and rip. I think that is the easiest. If anyone has any easier ways, I'd love to hear it, but this is the easiest. So you're gonna be left after getting all the kale off and you wanna rip, rip it into little chunks because obviously that's going into your soup, but this is what you're gonna be left with and this goes in the trash. Again, just this, this is what we don't want going in the soup, just that little stock. And why do we not cook our kale more than five minutes? Because we don't want it to lose all of the incredible nutritional properties. We don't want it to lose its nutrients. And again, kale is just one of the healthiest, healthiest things. And something one of my doctors told me a while back is it's really to get the optimal health benefits, it's better to eat your kale. These cruciferous vegetables, it's better to mix with the enzymes when you eat than putting in a blender. So if you can, try not to blend your kale. Although I love green drinks too, but that's just a little side note. So you're going to do that for your whole bunch of kale. And it's gonna look like that, okay? In essence of time, I am going, I pre-made some kale this morning, so I'm going to show you what the kale that I just boiled for five minutes looks like. It's so soft. And again, I did this for four or five minutes. So we're going to add our kale. Now again, I couldn't find my <laughs> pot top, so this would have been boiling for five minutes, and that's your last ingredient that you stir in. When you're doing it, you're gonna be adding the raw kale. I just did this, so I'd be able to get through this episode in time, so you could all go on with your Saturdays. But can we get the camera in here and look at how delicious this fall soup is. It looks even better than it tastes. And then last but not least, the bean portion. Cannellini beans, organic. I'm gonna add one can. You want to drain, but you don't want to rinse. So we're gonna add our beans. And this gives it that nice, hearty, hearty fall soup texture. And as I mentioned earlier, I would make some vegan cornbread or whatever kind of rolls you like and serve with this and your family is going to be so happy. I know that my family loves when I cook this. All right. Now, remember, I did this the quick way. It did not boil for five minutes. Probably could stay on here another five minutes, but I just want to show you what it looks like in a bowl. 
healthy, tasty. Again, people associate healthy food with it doesn't taste that great. Not so. All of these flavors with the rosemary and the thyme and the oregano, it's just so good. And look at that, the kale. Look at that fall soup. Get one of my favorite soup spoons. It's handed down to me, isn't that cute? And you enjoy Tuscan white bean and butternut squash ball soup with your favorite roll, cornbread. It's absolutely incredible. Um, look forward to hearing your comments. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. We will be posting all of this on janeandchain.com. Um, all the measurements for all of the ingredients. Oops, one last thing. Add a little bit of sea salt and a little bit of pepper, again, to taste as you like. Some like it spicy. I like it hot. I like to put salt, a lot of salt and pepper. But I would put that in the pot or individually. Just let your guests or your family members decide for themselves. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that vegan soup, that delicious autumn soup. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone, and we will see you next Saturday. Bye-bye.